I think we're just gonna have to be happy with that. That's fine. Hello, friends. Um, welcome back. Today, my six-year-old is at home with me because it's school holiday. So if you can hear some weird crashing noises in the background, it's him. Um, we're going to be making marshmallows today because I made marshmallows a few weeks back and my husband took them to work and one of his colleagues, Tom, was raving about the marshmallows and asked if I would make him a batch of his own and I said, of course I will. So today I thought I'd bring you guys along while I make marshmallows for Tom. So let's go. So I'll first show you everything that I have here on my bench set out ready to go. So ingredients are really simple. It's just white sugar, a liquid sugar. We're using maple syrup because it adds a nice maple flavor to the marshmallows, but you could use um, glucose syrup or corn syrup or whatever you have. Um, I will link below the blog post that I um, adapted this recipe from so um, and it's got a lot of really good tips for um, how to make really good marshmallows um, gelatin to set the marshmallows um, in this container is a 50 50 mix of corn flour and icing sugar and um, some cooking spray um, that doesn't really go in the marshmallows but I use it in the setup bit and then just some water we don't need that much water, but I'll show you that in a minute. Um, for equipment, we're going to need our stand mixer. You could probably do this with our hand mixer as well, but you have to mix it for a pretty long time. So uh, be prepared for sore arms if you want to do it that way. Um, a scale, saucepan, candy thermometer, um, obviously a cake pan to put it in and some baking paper measuring cups, a spatula, and a pastry brush. And I also need a bowl that I forgot to get out. So let me grab that really quick. There we go. All right. And this comes together so, so quickly and easily. So let me just jiggle some stuff around. I'll get you guys set up and then we will get going. Okay, so the first thing that we're gonna do is pour 400 grams of sugar into our saucepan. So. Okay, to that we're going to add 100 grams of maple syrup and a quarter cup of water. Mommy? Yes, Squish. I've got a baby. You've got a baby? Yeah. Oh, it's Pink Tony. Oh, it's a, it's a baby. A baby Pink Tony? Yeah. Okay, That's I'm just making a video. Do you want to pop out of the kitchen and go and play? I'm going to watch and see how you figure. Okay, alright. Um, he's going to watch. So the next thing I'm going to do is turn off my scale and move it away. So we're done with that now. And then I'm going to stir this sugar situation all together. Might move this thermometer out of the way for a minute while I do that. Mommy, are you making a video? I am making a video. Oh. Do you want to get dressed? No. No? Okay. Also, baby wants to watch too. Baby wants to watch too? Yeah. Okay. <laughs> Alright. So, then I do something a little oh. potentially controversial. I like Bobby. to... Yes, darling, I'm, I'm trying to make a video. Can you wait until I stop talking? Oh, but okay, he, go just, ahead. he just did his birth. His first burp by himself. The baby did his first burp by himself? That's amazing. All right, can I carry on now? Yeah. Okay. So I like to brush down the sides before I put it on the stove because then I don't have to worry about sugar getting crystallizing. So let me just throw that in the sink. All right, so when you're making marshmallows or any kind of um, confection that involves a sugar syrup, it's important not to stir it um, after you put it on the heat and it's also really important to wash down the sides of the saucepan um, because 
any sugar that's on the sides can cause the whole batch to crystallize. And nobody wants crunchy marshmallows, do they? Yeah, no one wants no that. No one wants that. Wait, why? How come they, they can be crunchy marshmallows? Well, that would be gross, wouldn't it? Yeah. It would be gross and weird. Mm. So once that's all washed down, I'm going to put my candy thermometer back on here. Not touching the bottom, though. That's really important because otherwise you won't get an accurate reading. And I'm going to go put this on the stove and turn it on to bring it up to 240 degrees Fahrenheit, which is about 120-ish degrees Celsius. Okay, the next thing we do is get our gelatin leaves soaking. So um, before we do that, we're going to take out half a cup of water and set that aside. Then we're going to put some water, no specific amount, just some into a bowl. Make sure you spill it all over the bench. That's really important. <coughs> and then we're going to take 10 gelatin leaves. Okay, can I have a look at them? Yeah. I'll choose the ones that I want to They pick. look like windows. Do you want to put them in the water? Okay, I'll do I'll it. show you how. Look, you can, you can put all of them okay. in the water. You want to put it in the water? This one? Yep. Yeah. That's it. And that one? I should push it down. This one? Push it down. See it? It's kind of getting some yellow. Yeah. That's weird. Spilling water everywhere. We're going to have to wipe that up in a minute. I could choose the last one. Okay, you do those two? Yep. One at a time. Good job. Push it down. And good job. Okay, and then we just set that aside. And that's that for now. Alright, let's wipe up this mess. Yeah. Because I'm making a big mess today. Yeah. Alright, so that can go in soft plastics recycling. Maybe next time I'll get all of the junk to my Yeah. Move that out of the way. Yeah, I'm right. using soft plastics. Yeah, thank you. So oh. while we're waiting for the sugar and the Mommy, gelatin to do their thing, yes? The bag is tied up. That's okay, just put it on top. I'll get a fresh bag in a little while. While we're waiting for the gelatin and the sugar to do their thing, we are going to prep our pan for our marshmallows to go in. So I'll show you how I do this. You can do it any way that you choose, but this is how I do it. I have two sheets here of baking paper and my cooking spray. I'm going to lightly spray just like that. And that's just to get the paper to stick to the bottom and the sides. Okay? And that's so it makes it easier to, just so it doesn't pop out. Do you know how baking paper tends to like pop out if it's not super stiff? All right, so next one, we're gonna just put a little bit more spray. And then the next sheet. Well, you're bringing a chair over, are you? Yes, yeah, so I can help. Okay, see. great. This is about to get dangerous in a little while, but that's okay. Then we take our spray again, and we're going to spray the whole thing a little bit more liberally this time. Like that. Your and that's it for the spray yeah. because the next thing we're going to do is take our container of combined icing sugar and cornstarch. Can I do that? Um, this is really messy. Okay, and we're going to use this is a tea strainer that I, I, don't, I don't drink tea, so I just use it for this. And we're just going to dust the bottom. Mainly the bottom, but a little bit the sides as well. Mommy. And we're going to dust it quite liberally. Yes, my love. I want to do this. Go you want to do this job? All right. Okay. See? Very good. You have to make sure it's all covered up. Can I do a little bit more? I'll do this. Okay, you do a little bit more. I'll check how the sugar's going. Oh, Mommy, how do we... Oh. That's an easy way. Oh, okay, that... Not exactly what I had in mind, but that's okay. <laughs> we'll just shake it out. Yeah. That's an easy okay. one. Okay, maybe we'll put the excess back in the container. The excess? Yeah. What's an excess? Excess means when you have a little bit too much. Wow, we've got a huge mess going on this bench right now, don't we? We'll just fill in that hole. All right, and then we're done with that for now. We will need that again later. So. We need an egg or anything? We don't need an egg, but you know what? We might wipe up this bench. I wonder how the water 
Let's get the dish. Dropped that again. That's the second time in the last like three minutes that I've dropped that on the floor. Uh -huh. oh, it's okay. All right. Let's see. <gasps> Mummy. Yeah. Why? I have an idea. You have an idea. We don't need um, to go and buy a Lego because we've got Lego right there. Yeah, I don't think we're going to give used Lego to our friends for their birthdays. That's that would be a bit. I mean, it's nice to have new things for your birthday. But right. it is new. It is new? Yeah. Because I don't really play Bailey. Okay, so yeah. now we're going to set this aside over here. Yeah. And then we're going to get going on um, getting the mixer set up. Yeah. So, okay, so remember that half a cup of water that we set aside earlier? Yeah, that one. That one? All right, I want you to really carefully lift it up and put it in here. Okay. Very good. All right. So then the next thing, we'll put that back on there. Next thing we're going to do is we're going to take our gelatin leaves that are all nice and soft now. See how they're all squishy? Yeah. They're like jellyfish, aren't they? We can just give them a gentle squeeze to get all the drips out and put them in the bowl. Okay. And then we'll just put the top of the mixer down and like yeah. that. And then we have to wait until... The sugar is at temperature, which it nearly is. So I'll move these things over to the sink. I'll go and check the temperature. That's going to be my job. Okay. We are at 2.32 and we need to be at 2.40. Uh, so, so, so I'm at a 10. Okay, it's ready. Uh-oh. So, So I don't know if I'm gonna let's see. Thank you, bubbling. Okay. So then we're going to put our mixer on low. Take the thermometer out and we're gonna tip it really slowly down the side. Mm-hmm. Okay, so... And see the gelatin all melted? You can't see fish on it on your chair. But the gelatin all melted. So it's melted in now. You want to see it wrapped in your chair now? Yeah, but I need to tip the rest of the sugar in. But it's not there. Okay, then we're going to put the mixer up to four. Okay. We're going to let it go for three minutes. Okay, so it's been going for three minutes on medium speed and you can see it's started to get fluffy and lighter in color. Now I'm going to put it up to high speed for another three to five minutes. So... Okay, so that looks ready to me. So I'm going to take my spatula and just spray it with some cooking spray so that nothing sticks to it and then we will let's see Ew. lift that up take this off give it a little shake what is that it's marshmallow that what's what that's in the bowl marshmallow you can have that if you want no okay put that in here and then I'm going to take, pop off their face. I'm going to take my bowl what? and my pre prepared pan and my greased up spatula, and I'm going to scrape this all into this pan. 
And that's that. Now we just have to let that sit for a few hours to set up and then we'll come back and cut it. Looking even more ruffled than I was this morning. That's okay. It has been about four hours and the marshmallow is all set up. So now I'm going to show you how I cut it up and get it ready to give to Tom. Okay, I don't know how good this angle is going to be, but super straightforward process because we lined our pan all we have to do is just lift it on out and that's that's it set that aside we're going to bring back in our um container here of icing sugar and corn flour set that just there and i'm going to get just a plate for now I think to set these on so I'm just going to peel down the sides because we sprayed it they just peel down really easily and then we're going to take our spray and spray our knife just lightly decide how big you want your marshmallows to be I'm going to cut this into five strips by five I think so about there and just straight down it's real sticky so once you commit you have to be properly committed and then I'm just going to cut that strip and the marshmallow into the dusting sugar and corn flour situation make sure you get it all over give it a little shake and that's it lather rinse and repeat for the rest you may need to also respray your knife every now and then just to keep it from getting too sticky. But that's, that's how simple it is to make marshmallows. And look how thick and squashy these are. And they are so delicious in hot chocolate or just by themselves and because we added the maple syrup as the liquid sweetener in these ones they taste just really lightly really subtly of maple syrup which is absolutely delicious so the beauty of making homemade marshmallows is that you can make them as big or as small as you want and you can make them any flavor that you want and they are fresher and more delicious than ones that you get from the shop so we better have a try of one just to make sure that it's okay because you can't go giving things to people if they're poison right so you have to make sure it's not poison okay here it is mm -hmm. nope definitely not poison um so there you go that's how you make marshmallows. There you go, Tom. Enjoy these, and um, I'll see you guys next time. Bye.